Hello guys, Emily back. I've taken a little bit of time to think about all the feedback I got on my video regarding body positivity and self-love. I will link it below so you can go watch it if you haven't seen it. But I'm just responding to you know all the comments I got from the Christian community on Reddit and you know other people that I've discussed with on the subject of self-love. I was surprised how much resistance there was for the idea that self-love is actually a form of idolatry and that it can be a form of self-service. Essentially, we need to do everything we can as believers to resist self-love, to resist that desire to nurture ourselves and focus on ourselves because that is the human tendency tendency the way i understand the gospel is self-sacrifice self-denial laying yourself down following jesus concerning yourself with the welfare of others and of course i'm not saying to neglect yourself it is in fact very hard to neglect yourself and yet again having said that it is also hard to maintain self-discipline by all means i encourage that self-discipline because it has a lot of good effects it has good effects on your husband he appreciates the effort you put into your physical appearance and that is a way of loving your husband it's a tricky subject to talk about because the messages of Christian doctrine and the messages of worldly doctrine have similar undertones. My biggest concern is humanism in creeping into the church. I think this is really the root of it. Let's have a look at what humanism actually means. Google search gave me this definition. It's a philosophical and ethical stance that emphasizes the value and agency of human beings. Individually and collectively prefers critical thinking over dogma or superstition. It's taking something that pretty much all humans will agree with because it makes us all feel good. Yes, we are all intrinsically worth something. In a sense, it's based on experience, human experience. If we as wives are not aware and alert to this, we will adopt these um, viewpoints and these mindsets into our beliefs, which will eventually lead us away from the servanthood, which is the um, crux of being a disciple of Christ. It is servanthood, serving the Lord. The Lord is a jealous God. He wants everything from you. I'm not saying I get that right. I'm not saying I am fully serving the Lord. But to deny that we are naturally self-serving creatures is a problem. It indicates there's something we don't want to let go of or there's something we're holding on to. And just to acknowledge that we have this tendency and that this is our innate nature to serve ourselves is the start. It is the start of the path of love and the path of fearing the Lord. It's not about our experience. It's not about how we feel. It's about God. It's about serving Him. It's about honoring Him. It's about recognizing His glory, standing in fear before Him. If we, we don't turn our thinking around to see it that way, we are making it about ourselves again, you know? Yes, God did love us. He did sacrifice everything to win us back to Himself. But the result of that should be to worship Him, having a good time all the time is not the pinnacle of existence. It might feel good and it might be good and look good, but that is not the point or the aim or the goal of human life. And once again, I'm not saying we must suffer all the time or hate ourselves or any such thing. But what I'm saying is God is the restorer. We cannot restore ourselves. God is the restorer. And the best way to be restored is to be at his feet and to do as he says we should do, to obey him. That is the wonderful thing. That is why I always refer back to, I think it's Matthew 7, where he speaks about the lilies of the field and how he will take care of us. This is how it works. <laughs> 
we serve him and he will heal and restore. We cannot measure morality by how we feel about something or how hard it is because God is looking at our hearts and he's judging us by what we are thinking in our deepest, most innermost parts. Scripture says the heart is desperately wicked and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. He said, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? We can search our hearts for all eternity and never get to the bottom of what is going on inside us. But we take our focus off ourselves and put our focus on Jesus, on the Lord of all. He can work the changes in us that we are unable to do. And that's what Christ is all about. He has come to redeem and restore. That is why I caution women against self-love, against body positivity. is because it's a self-help attempt at fixing ourselves. Christianity and our faith is not founded on humanity. It is not founded on the works of man. It is founded on the work, the finished work of Christ on the cross. That is all we need. We don't need to tell ourselves anything good about ourselves, ever. Nothing, none of that is good enough. It will never, ever bring us to service of Christ and to be sanctified and purified for God. We have to rely fully on the completed work of Christ, completely set aside the advice of the world because it is not scriptural to build yourself up to a place of um, self-acceptance. Nowhere in scripture are we told to accept ourselves. Nowhere. Even if we can accept ourselves. Even if. Is that really what it's all about? <laughs> it's about does God accept us? We might offend our neighbor, we might offend ourselves, we might hurt ourselves. But that's not the greatest crime of all. The greatest crime of all is the sin we have committed against God, the holiest of holies. To deny your husband something he needs or even wants because of an inconvenience it poses to you is unloving. To Make him bear the brunt of your your PMS hormones because that's just who you are and how you are at, at that time of the month is unloving. It's unkind and it shows lack of self-control and we are encouraged to practice self-restraint. You know, we have been given a great gift from the Lord to restrain the evil and to overcome evil because of the power of the Holy Spirit within us. And we are told not to quench the Spirit. And there are so many ways to do that, including making excuses. So to sum it all up, feeling bad about yourself actually has a good place. There are many forms of feeling bad about yourself and that can even be self-pity and that obviously is not a good thing. But feeling bad because you are sorry about something you are doing wrong or have done wrong is a good thing. It is the beginning of wisdom. What does the Lord say? Psalm 34. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. He is near to the ones who recognize their brokenness and who are truly deeply sorrowful about the things they do wrong against him, against his holiness. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the souls of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Everything we need should come from the Lord and not from within ourselves. So that feeling that, that sense of feeling bad or guilty is actually a sign that we should genuinely look within ourselves and ask the questions that need to be asked. Is there a good reason for this guilt that I experience? If you have a low self-esteem, it could actually be something deeper that you need to pray about 
and ask God to reveal to you or ask God to help you overcome. Having that low self-esteem could very well be an indicator of something that needs to change in you. And that's a good thing. It's a good thing. That is your conscience. And I believe the conscience is a great way to remain enlivened towards God, remain attuned towards God. You don't need a perfect body or a ridiculously pretty face to please your husband or to be great in, in the bedroom or to love your children or your family or your friends. I think we all know this deep down inside that it is what we do and how we do it that brings the greatest health and joy and peace and blessing into the home. So that is why I call my friends, I call my fellow mothers and wives to draw from the Lord everything they need, absolutely everything. He is abundantly full of the most wonderful good things. Nothing that is good, nothing that you see can exist without Him. That is why you cannot turn towards yourself for the answers. Turn to Him. I say all these words out of love and a desire to share. And I know I need encouragement and the same sort of exhortation as I give. So <laughs> it would be good to reciprocate and to hear your thoughts in brotherly, sisterly love. Thank you very much and I'll catch you again. Goodbye.